Hey everybody, we're back. Hi guys, <laughs> welcome to a audiobook nook chat. And we're here to go. <laughs> yeah, we're live. We're back. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, and it and it and it might be a wine Wednesday because, well, you'll see why. A little audiobook chat, a little wine chat. That's what's happening. But I'm back again, live for the third time this week. Can you believe it? Um, welcome everybody. Uh, today we are going to be talking with. Joel Shoemaker. He is the author of Bacon Grief, which I had the honor of narrating recently. Um, it is it, it is such a wonderful book. I loved every second uh, of my time narrating this. And it's also the perfect book for Pride Month. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna get Joel in here right now. So that button did it. Hi, Joel. Hi. I just got a warning that we're being live streamed. How about that? <laughs> a warning? Well, a, you know, a message or something. <laughs> you have been warned. This <laughs> is on the internet live and forever. I love it. For, forever. So. <laughs> Yeah, just, just, yes, forever. Well, hello and welcome. Hello. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> good. I'm good. How are you doing? Hanging out, you know, loving life. I'm here in central Illinois. It was kind of rainy today, but it was good. It was rainy. You know, I, I've not seen rain here in, in LA uh, in, I don't even, I couldn't even tell you. Because it's drought like, right? Yes, we, we do not we do not have like rain. Already a sore subject and we just started. I know. Yeah. I have I'm, rain and you don't. I know. But you have but 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 you have wine oh, and I good. didn't when we started this, which was so funny. Cause um a little a little like behind the scenes guys, so all of you that are watching, before we go live here, we we you know, we meet pre live in the, in the little zoom room and we you know we have a little little chat and um i go i i i gotta hit the get on the zoom and there's joel and he's got a glass of wine and i'm like wait a minute i gotta get i have to get myself a glass of wine too because this is wine wednesday what That's is right. <laughs> so. i do my research i knew i knew it was a thing <laughs> So I did. Um, I got myself a glass of wine. So um, uh, cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers. Indeed. Happy Pride. Oh, happy Pride. Yeah. And yours is yours is fancier than mine. Your wine. We've already. We we established that. Discovered that yours oh. is a bit of a step up. <laughs> I'm not yes. drinking like out of a box. Although I don't hate wine from a box, just so we're clear. Okay. Well. <laughs> what? What? Um, should we talk about the book or do we talk about the wine first? Sure. Guys? I'm no. prepared to talk about whatever you want. Oh, he's got. Okay. Well, you have. You've got the fancy. Um, you have the fancy. I got. I got the iPad. Oh, that's nice. Is that a, is that the actual audiobook? Yeah. Look at that cover. It's gorgeous. It is. Um, that's a, that's a heart made out of bacon. Yes. A graphic designer and I went back and forth about that because my original dream was to have turkey bacon on the cover as well as regular bacon because it's more inclusive. And um, she said, well, I charge by the hour and I don't know how to make turkey bacon. So if you like this, and I was like, I think I like it. I like it. Yeah. I, I love it. I mean, I actually do love it. Turkey bacon though. Yeah. Wouldn't that have been clever? Would have been clever. It, it really would have been. But like turkey bacon, it, it, it's, it's, it, uh, it's floppy. It's weird. Yeah, it doesn't quite yeah. look like, yeah. you know, so. Uh, I don't eat pork or red meat, so I have to like it. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I'm required to like it. 
I mean, yeah, this, this is everyone who eats turkey bacon knows it isn't bacon. There's no fooling you. It's true. There was a time that I I was having it like, and then I was like, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> I was like, I'm done having it. <laughs> it was a time, um, but bacon grief. I, I mean, okay, look. For those of you that don't know, let's let let's let's actually fill these people in on on what this book is about, how this came to be, why it's called Bacon Grief, sure. um, as well. So sure, yeah. um, I'll just give a brief summary. It's yeah. um, it is as far as I know one of the only works of fiction for a teen audience. And really, it's for a middle grade to teen audience. It's very much written for a reluctant reader. Um, but it's one of the only works of fiction that affirms and celebrates both faith and sexuality. Um, I've been a librarian for over a decade. I've been on a lot of committees um, where I've read a lot of LGBTQIA plus work. And it's all great. It's very good. But um, it's both angsty and also, which teen literature angsty that's yeah. what teenagers are I, yeah. I believe i mean i'm out of touch a little bit but and yeah. then it's also um they all ultimately like leave the faith if they are if they are a person of faith in the book they ultimately leave the faith and like that's a true a true life experience for a lot of people but it wasn't true for me and so they always say if you don't if you don't um, if the book doesn't exist that you want to read then write it and so um, that was what I attempted to do, was write just a happy, fun, ridiculous book. And the reason it's called Bacon Grief, oh, I was holding it off screen. The reason it's called Bacon Grief is because one of the characters is a word nerd, I would say. I mean, you had to read a lot of words that were probably hard to pronounce. Oh. And um, <laughs> I'll just be honest, I don't think I've pronounced them out loud. Um, but <laughs> but um, so one of the words that is in the book that is untranslatable, to the English language is cummer spec, or how did you say it? Kummer spec. Yeah, Kummer which spec, sounds right? a little bit more German, so that's probably right. Kummer, uh, Kummer spec. Very good. Yeah. See, that's why we that's why we pay you to do these things. <laughs> and so, um, but it but it roughly like the idea of it is sort of the um, emotional overeating after a breakup. So like, you know how we eat a pint of ice cream when something goes wrong or something. Mm -hmm. I suppose the Germans eat a pound of bacon or something like that. So that's right. where Kummer Speck comes from. And, um, I, when I, when I wrote the book, I wanted a title that no, no book ever had. And, um, and so there are books titled grief bacon because that's the most correct translation, right. but there was nothing called bacon grief. It sounds good because it like sounds like bacon grease a little bit. Not that that sounds, I mean, like that's gross probably or something, but you know, it just like kind of like trips off the tongue nicely. It does. So that's, that's where grease. the title comes from. It's a lot of it. It's like, I would say 60% my life and 40% made up nonsense. Um, and it's just a happy, fun book. It um, is. It really is. I, I, I um, you know, I cannot say this about all the audiobooks I do, but I had a blast narrating this. It it gave me such joy, um, and I I hope it it translates to the listener because like I had such a good time. Um, the, the 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 characters are just they're just really just full of uh, I don't know. There's just a lot of love and and, and yeah. And the other thing that we should maybe say is you had to read, you had to figure out how to put footnotes. I, there are a lot of footnotes in this book. Yeah. And you had to figure out how to put those in. And that was the way you did it was very clever. Um, because yeah. I, I didn't know what you were going to do. Like for yeah. me, I thought, you know, the footnote would be either read at the end, which I would have hated, or I don't know, like see footnote one. I don't know. But the way you did it was great. It's it's so and and what Joel's talking about is uh, okay so here's like the first footnote and you can see it down here and so you know I'm reading a whole thing here and I get to right here and there's a little number one and then you go down there and then you got to go back and continue um, and all of these footnotes are uh, uh, how would you describe it his uh, they're just snarky comments. Yes. Yeah. Inner. Th yes. Inner it's dialogue. Inner, yep. Yes. They are. 
the main character's just like snarky inner dialogue, uh, inner monologue, and you know, it's kind of fun because like here he's talking about what is this first footnote? I think oh, it might cargo, be about shorts. cargo shorts. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Because he has a, has a whole thing. <laughs> Right, because you have a whole thing about um, uh, what was it? What was it? Uh, well, he he can't. He hates cargo shorts with a passion, basically. Yeah, yeah. which who doesn't? Yeah, they are. They are. <laughs> they are rough. Um, I ha- yes. I look at myself when I wore them. I look at old pictures of myself wearing them, and I was just like, "What was? What was I thinking here?" Yeah. Right. It's not something, it's not a real fashion statement that we want to be making. Oh, no, I was like, I, this is, no. I understand um, the usefulness, perhaps, like, of having a lot of pockets. I but, guess, but they don't look good. No. <laughs> um, our shorts currently are much better, I gotta yes, say. Yes, I would agree. We yeah, have, we've come a long way, at least in the business of shorts. Yeah, we really have. Like... Here's what, okay, so like here, I'm gonna read you guys this footnote, the, the, how this sounds. Um, what's he talking about? He's going to, to, to church, right? He's going to church, yep, and he's saying you can't wear cargo shorts there. Right, um, so uh, he says, in here, it's not your Sunday best per se, but leave the cargo shorts, and then there's a little footnote, then I go down, you know. Cargo shorts were apparently invented in the 1940s for the Air Force to use in World War II. Someone else on the internet says they were worn by the British in the 1930s. I don't know why we need to fight over who came up with them. Instead, also according to the internet, they are hated because they look terrible on men. This we know to be correct. Uh, yes, and you leave the cargo shorts at home. Yes. I, I, I mean to tell you, like, the only reason there are footnotes in this book is because the, the, it's a very short book. Yeah. And um, it's not even really book length. Some, some would call it a novella. But there are short books in the middle grade and young adult space, of course, um, even though ever since Harry Potter, they've gotten longer and longer. And so I was encouraged by my writing group and some other um, like just people that I've worked with um, to make it longer somehow. And um, so someone just suggested footnotes. And I, I mean, I oh. ran with it. I think there are I think there are 150 some footnotes in this book. Yeah. There might be more footnotes than there are pages. It's ridiculous. I I, I kind of love them. Uh, I think it gives you a little more insight in, into him. Um, it's really fun. Uh, yeah, they've been it, universally positively received. It, it, yeah, I mean they're they're great. And then you have the other the other interesting thing about your book, like for me, then was also that our two main characters. They meet over uh, chat. I mean, yes. uh-huh. Uh-huh. and so they're. Oh, that's right. So you had to read like, like that. Yep. So, so for me, you know, it's it's like whoops, I just hit a button. You know, reading this is is really interesting because, and this was before we knew their names. Yes, so they're just one and two for the first two chats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so that's... That, was, that was interesting, but it was, I mean, like the way you did it was great because we did keep the number one and two said for each line, which I think distinguishes it for the listener as yeah. something different than a first person narrative, which is super important for audiobooks. Exactly. And I, I so it's, it's, it's always interesting when you have a little chat as, as a narrator because it's like, hey, Hi, hey, hey. I, I mean, it's like, whew, your brain, let me tell you, your brain as a narrator is like, sometimes it's like, fuck. You've done hundreds of these, haven't you, at this point? I have. Yeah. I did one today. <laughs> was, are, uh, was it, uh, was it, it was just, a, I won't say it was bad, but it was just a different experience. Yeah. It sounds like. Of course. I, I just, yeah. Not every book is going to be bacon grief. That's right. Amen. I'm going to quote you on that. <laughs> um, wait, I'm looking in the chat here. Um, are there are there comments? So, well, Michaela said, wait, my heart. I have to check this out for my school since I'm always looking for LGBT plus books for my kids and my middle school kiddos. Oh, Michaela's a teacher. 
So, yes, please do. It's it really is. So I've been a librarian for ten years, and um, I know. I mean, I know what kids want to check out. So despite the fact that publishers have gotten bigger and bigger with books, I really think there's a lot of kids that just want to read a short book, and I built it for a reluctant reader. There are no chapters, as you know. There are just <laughs> yeah. very short sections back and forth and back and forth. Yes. It's, it's really perfect for someone like me that has a very short attention span. Uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, it it uh, uh, it, it just, it, it like, I, I wanted to just keep going. You know I finished this book really quickly. Yes, you did, yep. yep. <clears throat> like, I just, like, <laughs> And but that's the kind of book it is, um, and it's you know how many pages is it? Um, just well, I think it's I think it's 153 or 135 exactly. or something. Yeah. But it's also like giant font because I didn't know what I was doing, and so it probably honestly is like an 80 page book. I don't know if people can see, but like this is large font, and I don't know. I mean, because the other thing that we might want to say is that it's self published. And one of the main, I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of connections. I have a lot of friends in writing and publishing. And one of the main reasons that it had that it wound up self-published was one because I became imp impatient. The publishing industry takes forever. But two, um, this book on the this book on the shelf is is really thin, sitting next to all the other books that are much bigger. Publishers will, don't, they they know in fact that this won't sell. If both are twelve dollars, for example, is what I'm saying. Like, like yeah. the average shopper will buy a three hundred page book, apparently. And yet, I come back to the fact that as a librarian, like these are the books that kids check out. They want to read books that are short. Yeah. It's still a challenge to read. I mean, there are words that I can't pronounce. We just talked about that. So it's still a challenge for the reader. But it's oh, yeah. just, it's just not a mammoth thing that takes three months to read. And that's good. It is good. I, I mean, I agree. Yeah. And there are words that you do, do yes, you know, like. <laughs> do you remember any more of them? I don't. Uh, um, I do. Um, Saudade, I think, was one. I can't tell you what it means right saud now. Saudad, I think. Was saudad. The correct. Saudad. You don't yep. know what it means? I do if I read the book again. <laughs> Cause I don't know what it means anymore. It took me. It took me. It took me years to write. Not that's not true. It took me a, a year to write and a half a year to revise or more. But I mean, like that's the other thing. Like it's been out in the world for six months. The audiobook has only been out for one month, I think. And yeah. so, like, I think you know, I, I've I've moved on to other projects, so it's like hard for me. You know, I, I have to like revisit the book to really remember its content and yet many many people are reading it for the first time just now which is which is great for me yes yeah it's great i think michaela's class is definitely gonna gonna read the michaela so. right your kids your, your kids are gonna have to check this out um oh michaela wait a minute what'd she say she said i'm pretty sure you were wearing cargo shorts or cargo adjacent shorts when i met you for the first time <laughs> she's <laughs> calling you out <laughs> Wait, but that was back in like what year was that? That was, that was the, I was not dressing well back then. <laughs> Obviously a long time ago. Yeah, I was not dressing well. I I was I, I was really like Meanwhile, I love that you just got called out. <laughs> I I did. I know. I really did get called out. But I remember I did have cargo shorts. Did I really wear them at Oh man, see that's bad. I mean, again, I feel like they're somewhat useful, especially if you're going to Disneyland or something like that, right? Because I you guess need, you probably need pockets for all the like snacks I that you do. buy or whatever. I I did need a lot of pockets when I would go to yeah, but now I I I just I make it happen with my make smaller it pockets. Yeah. It was 2015 actually. Yeah, I was not dressing well back then. Different part of life. Yeah, I was different different phase. I was really bad. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I'm seeing, okay, um, I love this even more, uh, so many kids are struggling with reading stamina after the pandemic. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really true. I mean, it really was, it really was built with the kids that I knew would read it in mind. I mean, it's, it's perfect for, for all of that. I mean, it's just easily, it's so easy to digest and the, um, the bacon hearts, by the way, I don't know if we've showed this already, are in the book to end every section. Yes, they so, are. Which is which is just 
I mean, come on. I got my money's worth out of that bacon heart. You know? Oh, yeah. You, you I did not get a turkey bacon heart, but I got a bacon heart. <laughs> a turkey bacon heart. It's pretty heart. cool. <laughs> have you ever made a turkey bacon heart? No, but I have made a taco out of bacon. When that back when I ate it, the taco shell was bacon. It was so cool. <laughs> That sounds amazing. It is. I highly recommend it. And then you put like macaroni and cheese inside of it. This was a whole thing on social media. I don't know, a decade ago or something. Was there even social media a decade ago? I don't know. I'm old. 20. What are we in? 22. It would have been like 2011, 2012. There was social media. Yeah. And so somewhere on there, it was popular to make a taco out of bacon and put macaroni and cheese in it. So I did. And it was awesome. Where is this today? I, I feel like this would be happening. I feel like this would be big today. Maybe we can redo it sometime. Yeah, I love this. Bacon. And then I can try to make it out of turkey bacon and it just won't work. Oh yeah, no, not at all. Bacon taco. Yeah. <laughs> said, Amanda just said, this man is a god. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, that's high praise. Thank you. Yeah. Amanda, yeah. I hope uh, she feels that way after she reads it. <laughs> I think she will. I think I think Amanda, you will definitely love this book for sure. Um, uh, okay. Oh, Amanda's watching all the way from Australia, by the way. So. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't even know. Do they have books in Australia? I'm just kidding. I'm sure they do. I'm sorry, Amanda. I'm sure they do. <laughs> Um, wait, I'm looking here. Um, okay, D see, Disney Mama said, even as an adult, I enjoy shorter books. So, awesome. And I agree, because when my favorite thing now is super short chapters. So, like, that way you can say at the end of the day, I read 18 chapters today. I'm killing it. But really, it was just 24 pages. I love this. Yes. Y yes. 18 chapters, but you know, that's how I feel I actually when I do like audiobooks that have short chapters. I'm yes. like, yeah, you're killing it. Yeah. Yeah, this is true. Um, Nicole said, I work in behavioral health at a school district. This sounds like a fantastic recommendation for some of my clients. I love it. it or listen to it. Uh, oh, yeah, I should put the link in. Yeah, I mean, um, that's why we're here. So you should probably do that. <laughs> um, what is it? So how does it work? It's available on Audible. Amazon and iTunes, right? Um, yeah, Audible would be the place to go get. Um, let me pop the link in, guys, right here. Hold on. I'm just <laughs> trying to find it. You know, <clears throat> I've, 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 there it is. Bacon Grief. What? You found it's it. Too... Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put the link in right now. You're with me. I was prepared. And it is it is a number one new release on Amazon. It is it is a number one new release on Amazon. Did you know that? Number one? Yeah, I don't think it means much because you know how Amazon has like 90 billion categories? So whatever category they decided to assign this to, but it is like a badge on our page, or it was today. It said number one new release. Number one new release. So giddy up. I love this. <laughs> um, and just so you know, Amanda said, mate, our kangaroos have little pouch pouches to hold our books, my friend. <laughs> I love that. I'm so oh. glad. I'm so uh, glad. Yeah. <clears throat> they hold the books in the pouch. I love that. <laughs> have you ever seen a, a kangaroo hold, uh, holding a book in a pouch, uh, Amanda? That would be, I mean, that'd be amazing. But. <laughs> Um, this, um, oh man, I'm just looking at the book. Oh my, uh, you know what I remember? Uh, uh, there was a word you had, Bill Dung's Roman. Oh, and you know what? That's also the name of my book club. I love that word. I've loved that word for a long time. So that word, Bill Dung's Roman, me, it's not a German word. It's actually, I don't know what. I don't remember the language of origin, but it means coming of age novel. So it's specific to like, not not this book in any way, but like all YA and middle grade. I mean, if there's a character that's coming of age, then it's a Bill Dung's Roman. And yeah. specifically, I think the character is a Bill Dung's Roman, I 
think, if I remember correctly. But either way, is not a fantastic word. I love it. Uh, it is. You, you have many of these words. Yes. You, you said, you know, I mean, cause you are the wordsmith here. This is, you know. Well, in the back of the book, because I'm a librarian, I do credit my source. So many of the words came from an article, which was the inspiration for that part of that character. And so right. I do link to that. So I don't claim credit for these words. I just want everybody to know. While I am clever, sometimes um, the <laughs> inspiration for that part of the book is credited as coming from, I think it's like a business magazine or something. So yeah. I don't know how I found the article and I don't know why it spurred inspiration, but it's there for all to read and it is quite a doozy. Yeah, yeah. That's where but many, you are, many of the words came from. Um, you know what I loved uh, about this book? You have a whole thing about the Music Man. Oh, you finished. You got to get another glass. I know. I um, um, you have a whole thing about the Music Man, which yeah. um, is uh, near and dear to my heart because I was Harold Hill in high school. Oh, fun! Which, I was the Anvil Salesman, which I believe is is the char the character was the Anvil Salesman in the book, right? Yes. Yeah, it was yeah. my first, uh, my first show, ever. There you go. Yeah. So, okay. so I was Harold in in high school, and um, so this also brought back a lot of memories uh, of that for me. And, what a uh, great show! Also, currently running on Broadway with Hugh Jackman. Although the reviews are it. not great. No, I saw it. I saw did it. You, what did you love it? It's amazing. It's amazing. Okay, so don't don't believe the New York Times is what you're saying. Screw the New York Times and their reviews. You know what? Like they. My husband brought know. me the bottle of wine. Hey, where's your husband? He's. Like, yeah. I think he's watching you. I'm so. He, he knew that you said that I needed the bottle. I love it. What a nice guy. It. Um, look, the Music Man is so good. Uh, I, it was one of like my favorite moments ever. I mean, honestly, like the, you know, like what, it was so good. I mean, we went to, we went, um, <clears throat> it had just come out like mm, a few days. Cause I was, in, I'm from New York originally. So I was in New York seeing my family over Christmas and, um, it had just opened like it was ju it was like in previews it was just opened like december 22nd or something i don't know and we uh i was like i gotta see if we can try to do this while we're here and hugh jackman and sutton foster are in it like this is you know <clears throat> i don't this we you know i don't know so uh i was just i was just like on StubHub. And I was like, "Oh, because it was sold out." Yeah. Okay. Of yeah. course it was. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So it, okay. it was it was a night before thing, and I was just like, "We're going to the Music Man tomorrow." And oh. uh, yeah, and how many and, tickets did you snag? Oh, just two. It was just for me and Allie, my girlfriend Allie, and we. And she has a huge connection to the Music Man too, because she used to watch it all the time with her family, and it was just like a thing. And uh, we were, it was so, uh, I don't know, something about being in an, in an audience, and there's so much energy in, like even before the show starts, there was such a buzz. Uh, <clears throat> and yeah, I read the reviews and I was like, what are you guys talking about? What? I know. The, in fairness though, the New York Times hates everything. They do. So you you got you can't it's take kind that. of it's kind of disappointing actually how much they yeah. hate. Like you can't um, take now that. I would I was yeah. in New York just before you, I guess, and that was my first time on Broadway and we saw the revival of company and it was the oh. night that the set broke. It shattered. Oh. It was in previews. It shattered and they had to stop the show for almost forty five minutes. <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty the cool to see. screamed and like jumped out of the set piece. Like, I don't know. And then the curtain went down so fast. I mean, that's a pretty amazing thing to see. It was, it was, it was amazing because like you go to NASCAR to see the cars wreck, right? You go to Broadway <laughs> to see the set shatter. As long as no one got hurt, everything is fine. No one got hurt, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
So people, people go to NASCAR. Is that a thing people do? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I. I. That's what my my one of my college professors in theater was like. It was an analogy, but I feel like it's a good one. I don't know. If that's why they go. But you know, that's the only the only time we ever see anything about NASCAR is when there's a really bad wreck. It's so. True. <laughs> As far as I know, anyway. I, know I have no I idea. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. How's your wine? <clears throat> it's great. So since I have the bottle, I'll show you. Is it you. though? I mean, is it though? Let me. Let's oh see no, we it's not really good. I'm, <laughs> you're right. I'm lying. What do we? What do we have here? It's from. Let me see if I can. Okay, so it's from the Southern Illinois Wine Trail, and it's Chamberson, which I think. So my friend who likes Illinois wine a lot said that it's Illinois and Missouri are like the best places to get Chamberson grapes. You know, again, I don't mind drinking out of a box, so I'm not the person to ask. Uh, <laughs> what is, wait, okay. Chamberson, that's the type of wine it is? I guess so. <clears throat> that's what it says. Bald knob, whatever that means. Shawnee Hill semi dry red table wine. Chamberson grapes with a hit, with a hint of spiceness. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you about it. I read the entire <clears throat> label to you. <clears throat> I'm looking this up. Wait, what is how do you spell this? Oh, oh um it's uh C H A M B O U R C I M. Oh, I guess it's kind of worse. Sham. You know what the best part of it is that the bottle's empty, so we get to you know drink something else next time. Okay. Have, have you seen this? <clears throat> have you seen this since you like wine so much? These things you can put on. You can like put it on the side, and it doesn't spill. Pretty good. It's great. I've, have you seen a Coravin? No, I don't know what that is, but I want it now. Okay. Well. Actually, I'm posting about this in a couple of days. Okay, uh, I'll watch for it's it. It's like a thing that you you stick it in the bottle and it keeps the wine fresh um, for like four weeks. It's crazy. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm reading about Sham Chamborson now. What are you learning? Single varietal wine used in blends, often produced in Australia, where it is uh, oh. blended with Syrah. There are uh, books and Chamborson grapes in Australia. Yeah. It can even be made into a semi-sweet wine or sparkling red wine. Uh, it is best consumed in its youth uh, due to its freshness and can be served chilled because of its typically strong flavor. Here's something else you won't like about me. We like all of our wines to be cold. Oh, boy. Well, uh... Sorry about it. <laughs> The, the perfect temperature is cold for a a red wine it should be uh like 56 degrees well that's cool so it it actually should not be warm which is a common misconception okay um so that's okay but it shouldn't be cold now, like if I put a wine in my refrigerator, I'll 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 take it out and let it sit there for about a half hour if it's like in the actual. Okay. Thing. So I will probably have the entire bottle of wine consumed by the time you're ready to open yours. I understand. I get it. <laughs> Wait, so is your wine Is it dry or is it this, you know, this label says semi dry, but it's not. Dry. I don't feel like that's true at all. I feel like this is a sweet wine. Interesting. I will say to you, I don't hate it. I've had things that taste worse than this. OK, but are you getting any like when you smell it? What do you what do you, what do you get? What do you smell? <laughs> not a sommelier. Did you watch that documentary on Netflix? They're yeah. like, it smells like tennis balls in a freshly mowed lawn. I don't understand that. It's true. No, it is true. I feel like it smells fruity. Okay. Um, I feel like it smells like berries, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it does. It de grapes? I mean, it smells like grapes. <laughs> this is Wine Wednesday with a librarian, folks. <laughs> I feel like it smells like grapes. I feel like it tastes wet. Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> that's my wine tasting notes. Look, or- I had a whole like wine education over the pandemic because I would talk, I, I, I would do this Wine Wednesday show and I would talk to, you know, like experts, like people that um, are, can just go like, uh, that is from the blah, blah, blah region of France, 2018. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, um, yeah. So I had a whole education during the pandemic, which was amazing because now I can actually be like, wait, hold on. I want to pour a new glass. And then tell us what it smells like. And I'll tell you. Okay. Um, by the way, guys, I am drinking one of my faves, uh, Silverado from Napa. Uh, Fantasia. Fantasia. It's not Fantasia. I've, I've asked them, is it Fantasia? And they were like, no, it's Fantasia. Okay. Okay, perfect. That's what it is. The interesting be. thing about, the, about Silverado okay. is that Silverado... Um, was was actually owned by Walt Disney's da- uh, daughter, Diane Disney Miller. This was her winery. So, uh, and they- I love that. Yes, and they uh, are in Napa Valley, and they have the most beautiful view of the entire valley, as you might imagine, why, why what else would Disney yeah. money buy? But right. They, <laughs> and they make some of the best wine in Napa Valley. Um, and this one is, is, a, is a blend uh, of the Sangiovese grape and Cabernet Sauvignon. So now I'll tell you what it smells like. Okay. I'm ready. Um, okay. Uh, so I'm getting like, uh, that's cherry raspberry, cherry raspberry. Um, but also, but also there's something else in here that that's giving like a spice. This is where Vanessa, the master of wine that I would do this show with a lot, would 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 really help. Oh. Cuz there's like another there's something else. And it's a spice of some kind? It's definitely um like a uh like a a smokiness or okay. um um like um yeah, there's like a tobacco I did it. Very I did good. It. I did it. Yes, that's what this is. Uh, and do you? I'll let you tell us what it tastes like. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. See, this is big. It's bold. Um, the the the. Uh, not too tannic. But but um, it, it, there are definitely tannins. You know, tannins are the things that make your huh? mouth feel all yes. So huh? I love this. This is an this is actually an amazing wine. Wow! Now that I stop and think about it, wow! This it's fantastic. is fantastic. You know, mine is less so. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> but also, um, do you aspire to be a sommelier, or are you already? No, I I just really like wine. And uh, like over the pandemic, because there was nothing to do except right. drink wine, um, I got even more into it. And, and I was like, well, I just want to take this time to learn more. Yeah. And uh, so, no, I don't want to be a sommelier. I don't want to No. Because they I, don't get to they don't get to drink the wine. They have to spit it back out. I mean, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, they what's the fun of that? Wine. Yeah, they gotta spit out the wine a lot. I know Vanessa would tell me. Vanessa is a master of wine, and uh, she's my buddy, and she um, would tell me a lot about like uh, uh, the like the tests to to lead up to becoming yes. that, and they have to mm-hmm. study. It's very cutthroat. Something about how there's only two hundred of the most advanced, yes, kind or something in the yes. world. Yes, I know that. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Wow. Yeah, um, this is a good point. Um, so, uh, remember when this was a chat about a book? Right. That's right. That's right. We were talking about a book. We got who told who told us that? Michaela, of course. Thank you, Michaela. Michaela is on on on. This on. quote here <laughs> says that Bacon Grief is hysterical and has so much heart, much like its author, New York Times best-selling author Chelsea Kane. Woo! This is the book. That's that's great. You got uh you got quite the quote on the cover. Oh look at you there. 
Do you know that the only reason this book exists in the world is because of Chelsea Kane? So she, um, so I wrote it during the pandemic because I, um, well, I guess because like you, I was, you know, looking for things to do. But also it's something that I've always wanted to write, the subject matter at least. And so anyway, I had a target date in my head that I wanted it finished at least a first draft by December 31, 2020. Mm -hmm. And so in late November, early December, Chelsea posted on Zoom. And I don't even know, like, Chelsea Kane is a little bit famous. Like, she she wrote Heart Sick, which is, and again, she's a thriller writer. She writes nothing like my books. So if people are like, oh, he's got a fluffy, whatever, G-rated nonsense book, hers are not that. So, like, but I do, but I do love them. So if you like a thriller, I highly recommend Chelsea Kane's okay. book. But anyway, so she was just posting like, hey, I'm bored too. I want to teach people how to write on Zoom. And I was like, well, I want to learn from someone. Yeah. And so um, I started taking her classes. And as the as part of the price of admission, um, she said she would critique your work. And then wow. she like shared an example of critiquing somebody's work. And this person had published like 30 books or something ridiculous. And she tore them apart. And so I was terrified. I was like, I, in a helpful way, in a helpful way. And so I was like, I yeah. don't want to send this person my pages because, like, I'm scared. So <laughs> anyway, um, but I did. But I did. I submitted it after, you know, because I paid for it. Might as well. So I submitted it to her and she she asked for more time. And I was like, oh, that must be it's terrible. And so um, but the reason she ended up asking for more time was because she wanted her queer teen daughter to read it who, and she apparently loved the book and Chelsea loved the book and she immediately wanted to send it to her agent, et cetera, et cetera. And so like, it just sent me down this path um, where I where I, I, I knew at least that it was good enough to pursue further. And I feel like without that encouragement, I don't know what, I don't know what would have happened. You know, right. I, I don't know if I would have been oh, constant enough to be like, other people might want to read this. So, so that was really, cool. really helpful. And I'm still in a writing group with Chelsea Kane now every week. So, I mean, right. and we meet on Zoom because she's in Portland. And um, I think there's like 10 of us or something. And we're, we're, we're mostly from Portland. I say we because I wish I was from Portland. I'm not. Um, I think we've established I'm from Chamberson land. Um, and so, uh, but there's, great. you know. You Southern know. Illinois wine country. Yes. Yeah, right. Illinois. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So, That's so I'm awesome. still in a writing group and I'm still writing. I've got like four or five projects right now that I'm working on and yes. um, that I hope to release and probably have you read and it'll be great. I will read whatever you write. <laughs> it just, it just fits. I felt like so, uh, uh, I felt like, It was in like such a way it just it flowed off my tongue. It was just like boom, I got it. Like, and and I, I it just was written like a. I, it it just felt natural. Do you know what I mean? Yep. It, it I'm just, glad. I mean, it was very colloquially written. Um, yes. And uh, and I've I've had a lot of people say that as well. The reception has been good so far, so I have no complaints. I mean, I just hope it reaches the kids that it needs to reach, you know? That's I what I want. How do we yeah. do that? How do we how do we get this to the 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 because especially now, especially right now, yeah. I mean, oh my gosh. Uh a book like this is so important. And needs to be out there and needs to be read by people that need this um, because our country is so effed up right now. Yeah. And we, yes, we need this in the hands of, the, of, of people. How do we get, how do we do this? How do we do it? Guys out there, how do we do this? Like, you know, I think this helps obviously what we're doing now, but I also yeah. think like librarians really strongly believe that every book has its reader and every reader has its book. <laughs> and so in some way, the people that need it will there will find it. Like there's savvy searchers out there, you know? Mm -hmm. And I've, I mean, and oh, just doing this by myself, I mean, I think I reached the 850 mark of copies sold. Wow. And, um, and I know it's in libraries in New York. I know it's in libraries in Ohio. Um, <laughs> and so I, th I think like, 
I don't know. I mean, I hope it finds, I hope it finds who it needs to find. And I have to believe that it will. I gotta get, I gotta talk to, I I have such a great local bookstore actually by me here um, in LA. I gotta, I should just talk to them. Yeah. And be like, how do you, uh, how do you get a book on the shelves? How do you do that? (laughs) How do you do that? Um, Cause it's like you know such a cool little independent book bookstore, and we go in there all the time, and they've got all of the correct books on display when you walk in. Yeah. Um, so, well, and you know, I've given a lot of the proceeds to this book to the independent bookstores that are holding it because my goal has never been to make money so much as like get the word out with this yeah. one. Of course, like. I don't hate money. Like somebody bought me this and it was probably six copies of the book that I sold or something. I so, you know, that's fine. Would, but, 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 but that's yes. not the goal but, of yes. this particular book. Yes. And so I, I have, you know, and so I'm happy to, I'm happy to do that, you know. All right. We love it. I'm going to talk to. Do it. I'm going I'm to talk to the bookstore near me because. Yep. They're great. And we know that we know that Michaela or somebody is talking to Australia, the entire continent. Well, that's Amanda's talking Amanda. to Australia. Okay, perfect. Michaela, Michaela just wrote actually. Uh, this, I mean, she said this teacher will be happy to host a copy in my room. Okay, beautiful. That's perfect, actually. Thank you so, so much. It's going in Michaela's room. We love it, um, and. Uh, she said, Water Street Bookstore in Exeter, New Hampshire is always hosting author events. Okay, there you go. See? Well, I love okay. New Hampshire, so. Love it. Um, so, yeah, we can we can get this out there. Uh, yeah. Oh, Miniature Missy said, I love this. The Ministry of Librarians, something I never thought about. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Love yeah. that. Yeah. But it, it it is it's true. I mean, uh, this book does need to be out there. I I I really love this book. I really. Well, and do. you know, um, the other thing that you know that's similar to what we're talking about is, um, you know, there's a there's a political push to um, get get LGBTQIA plus literature out of schools and bookstores and just the world, and yes. without consideration to like the fact that those people exist. Yes. And um, I just think like the more that we can do to push back against that so right so it's pride month so there is a movement in libraries to hide the pride and 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 people are going in and they're like checking out all of the gay books i guess and so that there are none which first of all great because that's really good for circulation and we base our (laughs) purchasing on circulation so that's gonna backfire but also like the thing that i keep coming back to is like these books are going to keep existing because the humans behind them exist and the yeah. humans that they're for continue to exist. And I don't think like that's, I don't think like that's, that's not God's design. Oh. And so, you know, I know that's a whole nother, le- a whole nother conversation, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I just, I all, it relates to Pride Month and it relates to, you know, books like this. I mean, I do think they'll find who they're, who they're for. And I think um, the, the it, they, books have to be mirrors and they have to be windows. You know, so readers can see um, themselves and other people. Um, yes, these people are actually checking books out. So yeah, the, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Oh my! It's it's mind blowing, actually. But do they not realize that that stra- I mean, well, they never realize that. Well, and also, they- like when they when they check them out, they're saying that they're never going to return them. So that's theft. And if they check every book out and it reaches more than five hundred dollars, at least in my state, that's a felony. And so, like, like I don't feel like they're considering the fact that like, a library can just press charges if they yeah. want to. Like, the record is there. Right to take a to check a book out of the library, you have to like return it. Yeah, and you have to like you register and your, your name. Mm-hmm. Your, like your license your like whole your... record is there yep mm-hmm. <laughs> pretty easy to track down if needed and um it's it's sad i mean it's just it's sad well it's very these people are not the smartest people but um yeah. okay mm-hmm. so anyway on to happier things because you know oh because we, we could go mm-hmm. yeah 
Because this is a happy book, I would like to remind everyone. It actually is. This, and that and that and that is um and that is what's so what's so great about it. It it, it really is. Despite getting into I mean and you tackle a lot of things in this. Yeah. Um because we tackle obviously all of uh the issues of being gay as a, as a teen and it, it, this gets deep into the church mm -hmm. um but despite tackling all these heavy issues it is just so much fun yes and uh, that's and that's the thing like i i really tried to keep it light i really tried to just like brush the surface with important topics and deal with them adequately in my opinion but also mm -hmm. like this is not meant to be a comprehensive study on no. anything <laughs> you know no. it's just another uh approach to loving god and loving others you know it i is. think i say that on page one you did what does page one say what does page one say i, I think this is the first thing i think isn't that the first thing you said it might be really close to the mm. first thing i said oh yeah it is because the book starts he was a man of God, and he was a man of God. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And, and they were loved by their family, and they loved their family, each of them, although some, as happens, struggled with understanding and acceptance along the way. Yeah. Um, yes, because the two boys, um, their families obviously approach it very differently. Yep. Um, which, yeah. which is, yeah. Which is, um, sort of like, just isn't, it's just like how things go. Right. Like right. You can, it, 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 that's the whole thing. We were playing the opposite. So one person comes from an accepting and loving family and one person comes from a less accepting and loving family. Right. And again, like that's just, that's just playing the opposites, which is an acting term, isn't it? You're an actor. I am an actor. <laughs> that is It is. No, that's true. That is that is true. Did you take an acting class? Like, well, uh, I was a theater minor. Minor. Yeah, which just I was a first generation college student, so it just meant like I had to declare something, and this was what I liked to do for fun. And I I think I think yeah, I was an education major, and education. now I'm a librarian. Like that's adjacent. That's yeah. actually probably in line. Well, wait, you're all you're also a magician. Oh, that's true. That's true. I've right. been a magician since I was seven years old. Um, I can't do a magic trick for you now because I don't know how to do one on Zoom. But I do. I do magic tricks. Like this is, this is amazing. Yeah. So multi multifaceted, I guess you could say. You are. So. Like librarian, author, magician. Yeah. What? And my favorite author of all time, Chuck Palahniuk, he says we're three people. We're all three people. Like you are an actor, a sommelier, an audiobook narrator. You're probably more th a Disney enthusiast. You're more than three things. I got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I got a lot going on. <laughs> That is no see all of that adds up to why I like this so much, I think. Too. Exactly. I got too much going on. We need to we need to chill at the end of a day. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> this I is what yeah. Agree. But that's what it is. I mean I really do think that's what it is. We we, we you gotta get out here because you gotta go to the, the magic castle one day. You Yes, oh my gosh, you. that is one of my deepest desires. Have you yeah. been? Yeah. Of course you have. Yeah. And it's incredible. Yeah. You know, we, we took my parents actually um, recently because my dad loves magic. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, um, it, it's yeah, it's so cool. It's just like a it's it's really neat because it's like a step uh, in addition to the magic. It's just like a step back in time to a different era. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's really neat. Uh, yeah. You, I, you have I, to get, yeah, you got to get dressed up to go. Yes. So. Yep. Yeah. I um, I have a friend that just went and she brought me back some souvenirs from the Magic Castle. So I like I have things that like make it look like I've been, which is amazing. But like I super need to get out there. You because, do. Uh, I know I would lose my mind. Like if you come out here, obviously you let me know. 
and we will figure this out. Yeah. I this is this is gonna be my add another thing to my checklist checklist mission get Joel into the magic <laughs> castle. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Before we go, miniature Missy said, "Where can we follow this man online? I refuse okay. to leave him. I refuse to leave him behind in this little viewer window." That's very kind, and I will tell you that I'm not great at social media, but I do have a Facebook page. It's just Joel Shoemaker, magician and author or something like that. And then I also have a Twitter um, that I barely use, and it's at Joel Shoemaker 10, I think. Um, if it isn't, just let me know, and I'll fix it. But that, can we edit this later? I'm pretty sure that's what it is. No. <laughs> This lives forever online <laughs> on YouTube in its current state the, forever throughout the history of time. Well, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So thank you so much. Okay. That means a lot. I appreciate that. <laughs> or many to miss you. Ask me. I'll get. Uh, I'll, yeah, there you go. I'll, we'll, we'll you can update with the correct social slate. Well, yeah, there we go. I, that might help. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this yeah, yeah, this was great. I'm gonna pop the link in once again before we go. Perfect. There it is. Go get it. Uh you know, if you got like a free uh Amazon or Audible credit, because they do that. They do yes. that sometimes. And you know, like use it on, on bacon grief, guys, because it's that good. I'm serious. It's so good. It's just wonderful. And um we need we need uh books like this now more than ever um and i was just so honored to uh, to to get to do this book um so th thanks for thanks for picking me of and, course oh my gosh it was so fun i'm so glad you know that was yeah it was a joy like really 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 a joy it was for me also and the next one is a short story collection about teeth and you'll be narrating it so teeth yeah mm -hmm. i i i, I I can't wait. It's very different from this. <laughs> I like different. I love it. Teeth. Ooh. I'll, I'll let you see a draft of it sometime. All right, cool. I can't wait. And we'll come back and do this again. We'll talk about yeah. teeth. Sounds great. I'll bring, I'll bring a better wine. Or maybe I won't. Or maybe you won't. <laughs> because, because I like, I like, I like this. I like this actually, where you're drinking the Illinois wine and yeah, I'm having the Napa true. Valley wine. I'm yeah, like, that's true. Like, this, this we'll is do great. that next time too. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I kind of love it. Um, this is great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joel. This was a blast. Yes, uh, thank you. Everyone go check out Bacon Grief now. Now. And uh, <laughs> um, we will talk soon. Yes, thank cool. you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Have a good Joel. night. Bye. Cheers. Bye. -bye. <laughs> <laughs> He's incredible, right? Uh, how, I mean, really, uh, what a guy. Uh, and and like I was saying, um, this book, uh, one of my all-time favorite uh, audiobooks that I've ever gotten to narrate. So, and I I, I mean that. It, it, it was a joy. So uh, go check it out, guys. Go download it on Audible. Uh, I, I, pro I promise you, that, like this one, you'll love. Absolutely love. Promise. So. I'm going to go. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, you got a little audiobook and Wine Wednesday combined. I love it. Love it. That was fun, right? Thanks, guys. Cheers, everybody.